Mm-hmm. Okay, I like that. Did this work? see that I don't know but I like this maybe I gotta turn it around this is better it's brighter I know this is my first time guys y'all know it is better than greater later so work for the real player <laughs> oh, I'm not a player I don't want to get myself a title yet <laughs> yet it's the um imperative word here <clears throat> I'm just going to give people time to share the video for one and people time to tune into the video. I hate that glare, but um, let me see if I can turn it. You know, I got to work on my lighting, you know, a lot. And time, do time, do time. You know what I'm saying? So, this is the first show. I'm so excited. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I need an iPhone. Like, can one of my sponsors... Please buy me an iPhone. Like, that's what I want for Valentine's Day. I want an iPhone. I need it. I need an iPhone so bad. But anyways, the day has finally came. Oh, my God. I've been anticipating this day for a few months now. So, for one, welcome to Axe Monday. This series was created because... Um, I have a lot of friends on social media sites that have, you know, changed their lives based on some things that I have shared on my post or, you know, my Instagram or my Facebook accounts. And they inspired me to go live and do a video. So the purpose of Ask Monday is to discuss relationships, life, love, and not just to gossip, but to actually gain knowledge of ways that we can make our life better far as, I hate that, girl. <laughs> I want to cry, but I'm going to go move forward. <laughs> so the purpose of the show is to, so we all can have a dialect on how to live a better life, how to live a happier life, how to have a better relationship, not just with our mates, but with our children, with our family, with our parents, just trying to change lives one person at a time. And that in return, I'm changing my own life. You know what I'm saying? Because the happier I am, the better I am as a person, the more I can share my love and the love I receive in return it just makes everybody happy and it makes for a positive environment. And that's really what I'm all about. I'm all about giving back, whether it's just a word, a prayer, something. You know what I'm saying? I just think that the world needs people that are um, selfless, that don't mind spending time trying to help others. So that's a little background about me. But I did want to tell people that follow me about my page, Makeup Monday. So I've had that page for a year now, and I've been through a lot with that page. I reached 1.4 million likes or followers, and make a long story short, Facebook uh, took my page for 30 days, and um, when the 30 days was up, which was last week, I didn't get my page back, and now they're saying it's indefinite. So part of me could like had a fit because it took me a year to build that those followers. And I just did so much work on that page and I committed so much of my time. So it was kind of a downer, but you know what I'm saying? The other side of me was like, when God closes a door, he opens a window. And if we truly have faith in what God has in store for our life, we don't have time to sit and bicker and cry about things. When God puts a period on the end of something, don't try to put a question mark. You just move on. So my whole intention was to go live on my page because I had a, such a huge audience, but it didn't work that way. So I created X Monday page. And even though I had to start from the bottom, I still feel, you know, encouraged and empowered. And I feel like I came a long way because something like that would have really upset me. But at this point in my life, 
it really doesn't matter because what's for you is for you and Facebook can't control that and a page can't control that and nobody control that because what is written is written so you just pick up and you move on and you do what you have to do so today's topic that's what we have to get on today's topic so today's topic ladies is sometimes we give too much to a boyfriend you know and to the point where there's no really need to be your husband. You cook it for me. You clean it for me. You doing my laundry. You taking care of my kids. You babysitting my kids. You're doing everything that a wife would do. You understand? Like, we're living together. We're shacking up. And we're splitting bills. We're doing everything. And we're, like, playing house. I believe that at a certain age that you shouldn't play house. Like, if you, I think if you're over 30, 40, and... You know what you want in life, that if you date someone, you should be dating for a potential mate to marry. You understand? Like, some people, so many people get caught up in boyfriends or girlfriends, but I think at a certain point in your life, you should be focused on, is this person worth having a future with? Does this person have goals and dreams or aspiration? Can I depend on this person in case of emergency? You know, it's like, it's... It's cool to date. I've dated. <laughs> it's cool to date. I still date. But at the same time, I think that when you want some type of stability in your life, that you just don't, you're not on the scene. You're not looking just to have a one night stand or you're not looking just to rumble in the hay with someone, but you're really looking for something more serious. So ladies, with that being said, we have to know our limits. What are our limits when we're dating? Because you're, Dating limits and your married limits, it can't, it's not the same. You have to have something that you say for your husband. You know what I'm saying? You have to have something that when you do meet a husband, that, okay, this is boyfriend level. Now this is a husband level. Like it's a graduation. But too many times we give so much to a relationship that ends up in a breakup, ends up with, you just feel like your time was wasted. You know, like if I would have knew this, I would have never did X, Y, and Z. But sometimes, ladies, we have to take responsibility ourselves. You know, I talk to a lot of women in, in, about relationships all the time. When I go out or I'm at a party, I'm the type of person that's always going to spark a conversation about relationships or life or love. Because I love to hear other people's um, opinion and other people's experience on life and love. So... I talk to women all the time, and sometimes we can be oblivious. Like, we point the finger like the man is just the problem. Sometimes the men are the problem, but we have to take responsibility because a person can only do to you what you allow. If you're in agreement, then they're going to run with it. You know what I'm saying? You can't always say, oh, he did this and did that. You don't know what a person might do to you, but you can, you know, prevent it from happening again. So, and another thing is, don't date, like in the Bible it says, be evenly yoked. So, if you know you're a clean person, so you like a clean car, clean house, don't connect with somebody that's messy, because all it's going to do is aggravate you. And at first, when you get to know the person, you're like, oh, he's a little messy. <laughs> Until you get with a person and move in with them, and you just can't take it no more, because they're filthy. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes in the dating stage, we look over things that we say, well, you know what? I don't want to be too picky. Or I don't want to complain about this. But you have to. Know what you want going in. That way it prevents so much. So it prevents arguments in the future. And it prevents frustration. Nobody is going to be perfect. But you want to connect with somebody who has more a lot in common with you. And somebody who's willing to work with you. It's just so much. And I didn't really write nothing today. Like, I got up at 6 o'clock this morning, and I prayed for a half hour. And I just asked God to give me guidance and give me a word. And I don't feel like he gave me a word. So I felt like I'm just going to speak and um, see what comes out. Because you just never know what a person may be going through. And I um, want my viewers to... Leave questions, leave messages, let me know you're there, let me get a thumbs up, let me get a heart, let me get something. 
<laughs> Let me get something, you know what I'm saying? It's not easy. And this is my first time, my first show. So we'll get greater later and I'll be more structured. But I definitely just wanted to get on and just give you people an idea of who I am and what I stand for. And I'm not, I don't consider myself a Christian. I really don't have a religion, but I'm a very spiritual person. And um, I'll pray with you. I'll pray for you. Because I believe that um, all great people should have God as a head of their life. So, you know, I like to joke. I like to talk mess. And I like to be serious. I love to talk about relationships in life. And I'm just trying to figure out who my audience is and what my audience wants. Because that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you help me get through different issues that we may face in life. And life is not perfect. Me, for instance, I'll give a little background about myself. So I'm 40 years old. And um, I had three children by the time I was 18 years old. Um, they were born in Elkhart, Indiana. I relocated back to Rochester when I was 21. And I've been in Rochester since. My oldest son, he had a heart transplant when he turned 15. And he died when he turned 18. From heart complications. Um, couple, I, a couple years later, I married a guy that I dated for a long time. And um, ended up in a domestic violence marriage. So, left that. Moved on. And I just started rebuilding myself. You know, I just started rebuilding myself from the inside out. I started rebuilding my self-worth. I started becoming more... Um, mindful of who I wanted to become. Who was I? You know, after going through so much tragedy and finding myself single again and really pretty much on my own, I had to think about what I needed for Monday to be happy. And in that search, I just was able to rebuild myself. And I always felt like I want to be an advocate for women, for mothers, for people, for t for people who have been through the same thing I've been through, and I just want to be there to be supportive, or give some advice, or just to be a listening ear because life is real. Life is real, and you just never know what a person's going through. You never really know a person's story. You know, so many times people on Facebook try to judge you, but don't know where you're really coming from, and I feel like that. Um, even though I'm not where I want to be financially, I still feel that I am a success story because I am where I want to be emotionally, spiritually. You understand? So you can't put a price on a peace of mind. You can't put a price on happiness. So you don't allow others or society to tell you what um, things that you should value. You know, you should value your sanity. You should value a relationship with God. You should value family. I know I'm going through it. Yes, Tia. I mean, and it was hard. I was just telling my sister today that even though I've been out of my situation for two years, even if I drive past the house, I still get feel something physically because I think that it takes a while for um, when a woman is abused, it, it's, it lingers. You know, you just don't wake up one morning, even though you might be out of the situation mentally. Sometimes you can still be a prisoner to your abuser. And even though me and my ex, I consider, I think we're cool. We don't talk, but I don't have no animosity towards them because I moved on from that. But at the same time, I still feel like as if I have a story to tell. And if my story can help somebody else, I'm all for it. I'm not embarrassed about what I've been through. I think it helped me just to become a stronger person. And not only that, it just let me know as far as relationships, what I want and what I would not tolerate. And it taught me warning signs. Like I just can't see myself being in another dysfunctional relationship because I want to see it coming from a mile away. And sometimes when you go through situations, some women become bitter. Some women feel like, oh, I'll never date again. I've been through. No, you don't have to be a sucker, but always leave your heart open for love. You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily jump into another relationship, but just because that relationship ended don't mean you as a person have to end with it. We have to keep ourselves encouraged because so many times when you go through abuse, you feel worthless. You feel like, you feel alone. You may feel as if you just want to 
crawled under a rock and just died. But we can't feel that way because we all, God has a purpose for all of our lives. So you can't let a person bury you. You know, it's easier said than done, but each day you have to take a step to try to get yourself out of that situation because it's not healthy and it's sometimes it can be a life or death situation. So if anyone's going through um, domestic violence, whether it's mentally or physically, you just have to make your exit plan to leave because you have your whole life ahead of you. And one good thing is, a lot of people, when you go through stuff, people don't realize sometimes situations not really designed to break you. They're designed to get you to the next level. They're designed to open your eyes up to what's over the rainbow, to the endless possibilities, because that's how I feel. I went through what I went through, but at the same time, God still gave me double for my trouble because I learned from my mistake and I didn't keep, you know, I didn't keep going against what God had in store for me. I, I got to the point where I said, you know what, God, I'm going to let you lead me and I'm going to let you show me the direction to take next. I mean, sometimes you just got to stop what you're doing and stop in your tracks and pray and, and ask God because there's so much confusion and people are depressed and they suffer from anxiety. The, I got my Bible under here. I wanted to pick it up. But <laughs> when you feeling like that. Go to the Bible. I know it might sound cliche, but it's so real. Or pray. Sit in silence. You know what I'm saying? Separate yourself from people. And that's another thing. Sometimes friendships or relationships with family members can be draining. And they can be abusive in a sense because it's like, I'm trying to manage this relationship with, say, your cousin. But your cousin is negative. You're trying to live a whole different lifestyle. Or you're just trying to be a different person. Sometimes you have to cut ties with family members as well. If they're not um, supporting your change. Or supporting the things that you want to do in life. And um, change gets lonely. You know, when I stopped clubbing and going out and hanging with my friends all the time. I lost friends. I, sit, I mean, I spent a lot of time alone. because Not because I wanted to. But because I was doing different things than what my friends were doing. So we just drifted apart. And at first, initially, I was kind of, I felt, I was upset about it. Because I'm like, why am I, do I feel isolated? Why aren't my friends around? But then I thought about it like, you know what? It's because God is preparing you for something greater than that. And it's just true. Like sometimes you can lose people along the way, but it's not because... You're being punished. It's because you're being prepared. And sometimes our friends can cloud our judgment. And sometimes we can just do things that we wouldn't normally do. But we do it because our friends are doing it. Even though we're adults, our friends are still influential in our lives. So I'm thankful that God took me through the course that he did because it first of all it helped me to rely more on myself and look inward and that's what Ask Monday is truly all about it's all about your personal inward journey that you have to take in order to get your mind focused so where you can be successful in life not just in your job and your business but in your personal life thank you thank you you know what I'm saying? I love those hearts and it makes me feel good like I'm being getting some support. <laughs> but um, thank you. And um, yeah, so it's like once you have a clear mind and you know exactly what you want, you're going to get it. Because the law of attraction, what's seeking you, what you're seeking is seeking you. But if you have a cloudy mind and you don't know what you're seeking, you're going to take what comes, you take what you can get, a dab or do you, you're always going to be at a certain point in life. You're never going to be able to reach the top. It's just going to be up and down, up and down, unsure. I'm sure, today I'm sure, today I'm unsure. You have to have tunnel vision. You have to focus on what you want to accomplish in your life. And you can't have, let all these people distract you. It's plenty. I just remember, even like last year, I remember plenty of nights I wanted to go out and party. But I knew I was working on something. I knew I had something I wanted to achieve. So it's like, you have to put yourself first. Because I know once I achieve what I want, want to achieve, I can party. Uh, day to party, it come to me. But I have to put me first. 
And if you truly want to do something that hasn't been done before, you truly want to do something where you want to make a name for yourself, thank you. If you truly want to do something that's impressive, you have to separate yourself from the norm. And the only way you're going to be able to separate yourself and stand out is if you do something that most people won't do. And most people will not sacrifice their time for the greater that will come in the future. And that's one thing about being an entrepreneur and being in business is you have to learn how to, you know, think about the future and sacrifice time, having fun, family time, or different things, sacrifice money. You have to sacrifice different things for things that you want. And if you're not willing to do that, you're not ready to be successful. Everybody is not meant to be um, millionaires. Everybody is not meant to be successful in a sense. It's what you want in your heart. If, you, if you're happy with a nine to five, by all means. But if you want something greater and bigger and something that'll last generations and you want to leave a legacy for your family, it's the way you have to carry yourself. It's the way you have to study. It's the way you have to reach out to people who are doing what you want to achieve in your line of work. You know, it's levels in. And what people fail to realize is when it comes to wealth, it's um, it's all on, it's all a blueprint. The same wealthy people have all followed the same blueprint and they achieve wealth. And I was just telling my daughter today, like, I didn't go on a quest for God. I didn't go on a quest for spirituality. I went on a quest for how to become wealthy. And that's all I would study. And that's what I would read about. And that's the videos I would watch. And that's what I would Google. Like, I'm obsessed with what steps do you take to become wealthy. And this is what always led me back to God. Everything I study always led me back to faith. Always led me back to spirituality. And then I just started saying, well, it just made me inquisitive about who is God really? You know, like beyond church, beyond running up and down aisles and praising the Lord and just, I just really wanted to have a relationship with this God and a better understanding of, you know, what he is. And so that's where I'm at in my life right now. I'm just building my relationship with God for myself, not what people tell me. Not the scriptures people quote out the Bible, but things that I can read for myself in prayer and just sitting with God. You know, it just makes a big difference in my life. I mean, I'm everyone knows I'm a sinner. <laughs> I'm a sinner, okay? You got me. <laughs> but I have such a love and respect for God, and um, I just try to put it in everything that I do. But at the same time, I know I've covered so many subjects, but it just seemed like it's needed. And I just want to encourage everybody, if you really want to do something and you're working on a business plan or you're working on changing your life, whether it's your weight. And speaking of that, Wednesday, 7 a.m., I will be going live. And y'all see I'm a normal weight. <laughs> I'll be going live 20 minutes of cardio every Wednesday. Work it out Wednesday because you want to feel good from the inside out. We want to look good. You know, that's when we look good. Summer is fast approaching. So, I will be, you know, and that's another thing. It's not easy to go live and um, have all my fat flapping and whatever as I'm exercising. But I need it for myself and I want to encourage other people. I want to encourage plus size women. I want to encourage women who just never even thought about working out. Do it from home. I'm doing it from my home. You can do it from your home. And we can shed some pounds together. So that's a whole nother segment I will be having, which I feel is important, especially this time of year. The holidays are over Let's get it. So that's another thing I wanted to say. And hold on. <laughs> I'm just keeping um the time is going by fast, even though I'm gonna be out here for an hour. It's already we are already like 30 minutes into it. But anyways, so now if anyone have any questions, please feel free to comment. I will answer all questions. But, I mean, I just feel like come to this page for encouragement. If you're looking for encouragement, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling like you just need a friend, come to my page. Because I'm, that's what I'm here for. I'm here for support. I'm here to help. And I'm here to show you a different way if I can. Because life is unpredictable. 
and life can be hard. And I just feel like I'm an honest person and I genuinely care about how other people feel. I'm not perfect. I don't portray to be at all. You know what I'm saying? I don't portray to be perfect at all, but I do know that it's a need for me. It's a need for a person on Facebook like me that um, can pray for people and that can have a dialect with people. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not often you can find a person that you can really connect with and that has just genuinely out to help people because I feel like you're in my energy feeds off your energy. And if it wasn't for my audience, then there would be no Ask Monday. Even though my audience is kind of small, like having a page with a million point three people and having thousands of people, it doesn't matter because at least if that one person can um, benefit from this show, that's what matters to me. And we can build a nation of women who are strong minded for one. I mean, we can be physically strong, but we need to be strong minded. It comes from the mind because when a woman is and her mind is strong, it's hard to break. You understand, like, we can't, and a lot of women want relationships. Oh, I want a man. If only I had a man, I want a man. First, you got to have a mind. Before you get a man, you got to have a mind. You got to be able to, do, you don't. You never know what you're going to deal with when you get into a new relationship or when a new man comes in your life. Some man come into your life to destroy you. And if you're not built for that, you're not going to be able to handle that. So, first, you have to have a clear understanding of what kind of man you want and what kind of man you don't want. I know I don't want a man that has no respect for his mother. I know I don't want a man that doesn't believe in God. I know I don't want a man that doesn't understand the importance of family values. Like, we have to, if you have to, make a list. Make a list what I want and what I would never accept. And stick by it. You know, have standards. People say, oh, don't be picky. Yes, be picky because it's your life. It's your life that you're letting these people into and you have to be picky. No, you can't always pick Mr. Perfect, but at least pick someone who can listen to your life fine without the drama, without, you know what I'm saying? You just never know who you're choosing. And like I always say, I am against people dating offline. Don't find nobody on Facebook. A lot of men online play games. You don't need that. You need somebody at a coffee shop, church, anywhere else. But don't meet nobody in line because I just feel like you never know who you're dealing with. Because people put up such a facade on Facebook, especially these days. You know, it's just, it's to me, it's not worth the risk. And a lot of people were upset about pe uh, Backpage being shut down. I'm, th I'm glad it got shut down. It was women getting murdered off of that and raped and everything else. And it's just like, it's not good. It's the devil's playground. What you're seeking is seeking you. And if you're seeking strange men, they're seeking you. So, ladies, you don't need that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's so much. not saying you can't find good people in life, but it's just so many places where you can meet men. So, there's no need to be on Facebook looking for men. And a lot of these men, they look for targets. They look for women with low self-esteem. They look for women that they feel that they can just come in their life and do what they want. And we don't need that because we are Monday Nation. And Monday Nation is a group full of women who are strong, who are independent, who are good mothers, good wives, good cooks, good lovers, good everything. Like everything that we do, we try to do it with style and grace. So that's what I really want to say because I just feel it's important because I think it's good to have a team. I think it's good to have a mastermind group, especially of women who support each other, who encourage each other, who can be each other's backbone. Because a woman is just a different creature, you know, from a man. And we've been so conditioned to catfight with each other or to hate on each other or to not compliment each other or to compete with each other for a man's affection that we've lost the fact we lost the fact that women together are so powerful they just did the woman's march and um i would like to send a shout out to my granddaughter milan she is one of my biggest fans and one of my biggest inspirations and you know speaking of losing my son it was hard and god blessed her my daughter with her and it made our journey a lot easier because she was in our life thank you girly so, yeah, all is finest. I am a grandma. <laughs> a one. <laughs>
So anyway, um, yeah, so ladies, get your mind right. That's like my main advice. Get your mind right mentally and spiritually. Like it just because with a clear mind, you can just get so much more accomplished and you can just be more valuable to your family, to your mate, to your job. You just become a more valuable person because you got your mind on right and you're not just being subject to anything that comes your way. And that is important. And, you know, I didn't get like this overnight. And I call myself an expert because of experience, because of research, and because I'm living it. You know, I just didn't wake up one day and say, you know what? I'm going to be an expert. <laughs> like... It took years. It took years. If you go back five or six years, like I was writing blogs on relationships. I was doing, you know, I always had a website. I always the thing I did a, um, when I had my lingerie store, Monday's Lingerie, on Monday nights I would do a thing called the Great Love Debate. Like I've always been in this type of work. So I'm not new to this. I've been doing this for years. I feel like I'm qualified and certified. So I wanted to just give back and I wanted to just set a scene, set a place where we can all meet and we can talk and we can vibe. And I'm no longer going live from my personal page, um, but this page is where you can find me. I will be going live once a week, probably more, just depending, you know, as the weather change, I'll be getting out more, going to the beach, going on a boat. Oh God, I got a lot of plans now. Okay? <laughs> so, you know, I'll be going live. And at different locations. And um, I just want you guys to get to know me. And for us to build a relationship via Facebook. Um, it's possible. And I'm looking forward to it. And if I could be a resource to someone, I am more than willing to. There's a lot of women that's starting businesses these days. Tax time is coming, ladies. So tax time is the perfect time to invest money in yourself um it could even be in the stocks and bonds or it could even be you know in the savings for your child i just want my people to be mindful of i don't care how you spend your money i don't i'm not getting taxes back my baby 22 i wish <laughs> but i'm just saying it's a t it's a way to create more wealth like you know you could spend a thousand dollars on something but all you're going to have is something that depreciates in value. You can invest a thousand dollars in something and turn that thousand dollars into five thousand dollars. You know, if I had something that you can invest in, I'll be <laughs> doing my sales pitch, <laughs> but I don't right at this moment. So, my thing is, ladies, be mindful of what you do. And if you want to, you have to invest money and grow your money and not just splurge your money. And but don't get me wrong. Take time to splurge on you and your family, but try to invest a little something if you can. Sometimes people just can't, and that's fine too. But I just want to encourage women that if you do want to start a business, start it and tell me all about it, and I can see what I can do to help you. And let's just promote each other, grow each other, encourage each other. Like you just can't lose when you got good women on your team. That's everybody is working towards the same goal because women are just natural born nurturers and i just think that women are just diamonds like we go through so much but at the same time we can be so strong and we are what every strong man has behind him as a strong woman look at michelle barack obama it's just she is just like um the epitome of what a woman brings to the table and what a woman can bring to your life so Ladies, we have to be strong and we have to be valuable. You know, it's easy to connect with a woman and just get with somebody basic. But if you truly want a dynamic man, you want to be a dynamic woman. Men come in all kinds of ways. You know what I'm saying? You got men, regular men, men from the streets, men that hustle, you got hardworking men, nine to five men, just basic people that's doing basic things. But if you really want a phenomenal man that stands out, that is just like somebody you couldn't even imagine dating, you have to be a phenomenal person and you have to put yourself in position to be chosen, you know? And um, 
other than that, you just want to get what you get. Date this dude, this local guy. He's a player or whatever. Dump him. Get with somebody else that's kind of on the same page. Like, you want to get what you give. If you don't broaden your horizons, you're going to always date a loser, basically. You know what I'm saying? And to me, a loser is a person who doesn't have dreams and aspiration, isn't motivated by anything, that's just comfortable just settling. And to me, that's a loser because I'm waking up every morning like, what's next? We, we got to get up and go. I want to accomplish this. I want to read about this. I want to do this. And if my mate don't have that same drive, it's not going to work because I just want more out of life. And I think that we should all um, date people that bring the best out of us that compliment us, that support us, that push us, you know, because one thing about it is 10 men can say you're beautiful, but if your man don't tell you, it's like you're ugly. You know what I'm saying? It's like you, you know, you hear the other men saying it, but you don't because that one person that you want to acknowledge you doesn't. So it's like you start questioning yourself. Am I beautiful? Why doesn't he see the beauty in me? What's wrong with me? We start just self-examining ourselves. But no, if your man don't call you beautiful, it's not because you're not. It's because he is a problem with him. You know, and we have to stop just accepting things like that and just complaining about him. Oh, he was out all night again. Oh, I'm tired of girls calling the phone. Oh, a woman done knocked on my door. Oh, he done, he got my car and he got another woman in it. How many times are you going to be a victim? You know what I'm saying? Stop playing the victim and start standing for something. A person only, let me find a sucker. I'm going to bump his head. You know, I'm not that type of person, but I know how people think. And I know how a person feel like you're weak or feel like they can take advantage of you. They will. So don't let that happen to you. And if it does, get out of it and try to foresee warning signs with a person like that. Like, I just, I'm to the point where I don't even think I could just date a peer, one of my peers or something, or even date anybody I've ever dated in the past. Like, I'm beyond that. Mentally, spiritually, I'm beyond that. I just can't see... I don't know. Dating a certain type of person. I'm, I'm in the... I'm in what you call the brat gang. You know, <laughs> I got to be spoiled and not necessarily financially, but spoiled in the sense where if I'm in pain, my man in pain. If I, if, if, It's all about me. Even though I'm going to go out my way to make my man happy, I want him to be my number one fan. And that's the only type of relationships I can strive in. Thriving is a man that feels like, if I, a man has to make me feel like I'm his everything even if I'm not, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that's important to me. That's going to motivate me. That's going to make me want to work harder towards our relationship. That's going to make me want to do more things for him and with him. And that's going to make me feel confident when I step out the house. You know, I'm going to have a certain pep in my step because I feel like the man that I love and I'm sleeping with every day, he's feeding me. He's nurturing me. He's nurturing me mentally. He's nurturing me spiritually. There's nothing I can't do. I can take over the world. That's the type of men I have to date because I know that that's how the best of me comes out. So that's why I couldn't really necessarily see dating somebody who isn't like that. And a lot of men these days are selfish or they feel like, you know, they're the prize. No, the woman is the prize. That's first and foremost, because God says when a man find a wife, he find a good thing. And that's facts. The woman is the prize. You know, God, some of these guys want you to worship them. Don't worship them. Don't treat a boyfriend like a husband. So Alicia says, women got to boss up on these men like that. Yes. And that's important because really you have to be, um, I like to be spoiled, but I like to make my own money because I can't be on no um, allowance. Don't give me no stipend because what I might want to spend on me, you might can't or don't want to. So, you know, you can be in a brat game. It's good to be spoiled, but you also want to be an independent woman. You also want to know that you can make it whether the man is there or not. And you do need to boss up because there's a lot of women that have men when they stay home all day and lay around, don't do nothing. 
and watch TV, that's not good. Because <laughs> it don't matter who you with, you all, if, if, single or not, you always want to be in a position where you can provide for yourself. And I don't like people that make excuses. I don't want to hear you don't have a babysitter. I don't want to hear you don't have bus fare. You have some type of skill God gave you. You can work from home. You can do something. You can braid hair. You can do lashes. You can clean people's houses. You can babysit. There's always a way to make money. And there's always a way to build a business. You know, a lot of people say, well, I don't, I don't work. So what? I don't work. You don't necessarily have to work a job. In order to make money or in order to build a business, you have to start somewhere, but something's better than nothing. DSS, I, I'm not, I haven't been on DSS in years, but I do know that they do not pay enough money where you can live a decent life. They don't give enough food stamps where you could just, you know what I'm saying? It's just enough to get by. It's just enough to say, here, poor people, be quiet, take your stipend and be happy with your life. And you know what? If you want to buy crab legs with your food stamps, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> here, ball out. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's true. But I'm not saying people don't need assistance because we all fall short sometimes. But don't let that be the stipend in your life. Don't let that just be something that you settle for. Take, if you, you get DSS or Section 8 or whatever, use it as a stepping stone. But still work on towards having your own. Always work on having more and having better. Don't allow the system, the government, men to keep you at a level where you feel comfortable. Never, I just, I don't think I can make enough money for me to just be like, I'm good. And just sit back. Because I think about all the kids that's coming after me, my grandkids, my great grandkids, my great great grandkids. I need money, millions, billions. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, never be comfortable with less always want more whether it's on your job in your relationships with your children with relationship with god always want more always want to go that extra mile to get more because once you become complacent and just comfortable you can never grow and that's what life is about progress you know the more progress we make the more motivated we are that's just like okay say we're in school and you're getting bad grades on your paper one day you get a b and it's like oh my god if i can get a b i can get an a and it's motivating you you're reading you're studying you know what i'm saying you're taking notes and you work yourself up to that a and it's like wow if i can accomplish that i can accomplish anything and that's the attitude you have to take towards life you know what i'm saying just like now i got about seven eight viewers and it doesn't stress me because I know that it's a process. And I understand that, okay, if I got eight viewers today, how many can I get next week? I know that I'm going to work and I'm going to do certain things systematically to improve what I'm doing now. And that's what life is all about. It's all about improving. Improve yourself. Don't ever get so full of yourself where you feel like you can't improve yourself. There's always room for improvement. So I just want to encourage people to... Always work towards bettering yourself. Always try to improve yourself because you just never know. There's always been somebody, oh, this was the first part being on the moon. Or, you know what I'm saying? People creating things and patenting things every day. And you're, it's something out here with your name on it. It's something out here that's ready for you to discover it. It's something out here that's ready for you to create it. Is waiting for you. You you sitting here worrying about living paycheck to paycheck when you got a million dollar idea sitting right in your pocket and you don't even know it because you don't have that faith and you don't have that you you don't have that drive to pursue it. You're letting fear take the best of you. But I'm here to tell you, stop putting it off. It's 2017. We gotta level up, level up. Stop putting that off. Get that idea out your pocket. And start making it come to life. Because, like I said, God has given us all a talent, God-given, that you didn't have to go to school for. It just comes naturally. And sometimes we just look over that talent. But it should be developed. Even if it's just not a part-time thing. And that's another thing. I see a lot of young women that's working triples and doubles at nursing homes. That's not good. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to wear your body out. You don't want to get it. I've had a back injury. At a, but let me tell you. 
<laughs> I got to know I'm not lying. And the people that work with me could vouch for me. But me, I used to work at a nurse. Well, it was an independent living facility for three years. And my hours were 6 a.m. to. You want to work overtime? They didn't even ask me. <laughs> they already knew. No, 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 no. And if I did, it's because it's something that I wanted to do. You're not about to kill my body, kill my back. I'll work my six hours a day, and I will come home and work on my own business ten hours that day. You understand? So stop putting so much into building somebody else's business, to building somebody else's pockets, because that little chump change they're giving, paying us ain't nothing compared to what they're getting. Create your own. If you are seeing that you truly like um, dealing with elderly people, create your own, like, what is it called? Like, when you go and sit in someone's house, create your own little business. And regardless of what you do, you can always create your own business. Don't let these jobs tear you down mentally and physically because it's not worth it. You can't make enough money to cover what could happen to you. You don't want to get my age, 40 or 50, and your body is broke down because you've been lifting and doing this and hoyless and all that. Stop. Y'all don't know. I understand y'all want to buy bundles and take trips and all that, but invest that money into something else, and you wouldn't have to work so hard. You don't have to work three jobs. You're not going to have to work a triple and double because you're going to have passive income coming in, or you're going to have some income coming in that you built and that's going to benefit your family and not just a corporation. And that is real talk because sometimes we just get so caught up in work. And you know what? I was like, it didn't matter. Even though I had to go to work, for, I always had an idea in my head that I was going to quit my job and work from home. How I was going to do it, I had no clue, but I knew that was my goal. Years, I was at work still working on my business still working on my page i remember one day i had a um website called um mama monday and mama monday was about crime in the city or crime you know in different cities all over the world and i remember in rochester new york a police officer got shot and i remember waking up to that and I had to be to work by 6 a.m. And I remember waking up to that at 5, like, oh, my God, I have to put this story on. So I took my laptop to work, went to work, went in the bathroom, set my laptop up, typed up the whole story, whatever, put my laptop back up, went back to work. And the, the point of the story is I was just so determined to, even though I had to be on this clock and make money to provide for my family, I still wasn't going to let myself down. I still put my business first and I still put what I needed to get out there in the media first. You know what I'm saying? I made money off of that. And it wasn't even about the money. It was just about the business. Like, you know, I can't be in two places at one time, but I'm going to make it work. And it's been times I've sat in bathroom stalls at work just frustrated because I didn't want to be there I didn't want to do that type of work I didn't I just didn't want to be there I knew in my heart that my time was near for me to quit and I would just cry and I would get up wipe my tears and get back to work with a smile on my face because I knew that I had to be there I didn't want to be there so last year I think with the grace of God I was able to quit my job and I just I just can't see working for somebody else I will go on the beach and sell Cone ice ice cream or ice cones or something because I'm not with it. But I, I had to go through a lot to be able to quit my job. Like I said, it took me three years with a lot of tears and long nights and just frustration and prayers. And God just answered my prayers one day and he just took that burden off me and said, you know what? You put your time in. You've been faithful. You know, you just stuck to what you believed in. Let me take some stress off you and that's exactly what he did and i appreciate that and i'm just here to keep people encouraged because i know life is not easy it wasn't it's not easy for me and it wasn't easy for me like I, I just wanted to live a life where i was in control of my own time where i didn't have to wear a uniform where i could look nice every day where i can shop if i wanted to where i could just live a carefree life and still invest my time in my business and what I'm trying to do with myself. So it didn't happen overnight, but that was always my plan and my plans are not over. I have not reached the pinnacle of what I plan to accomplish, 
but I'm staying steady on my journey. And with that being said, I just invite you guys to start your own journey and to follow me on mine, you know, because I just want to be an inspiration. Anything is possible. If I could do it with everything that was against me from being a young mother of three, with everything that I had against me in my life, I know that um, you can be whatever you want to be and you can just have peace within. And that's what's important to me because, like I tell my son, my son is an aspiring artist. And I just tell him, I said, well, you know, yeah, focus on being signed or whatever, but you got to focus on your mental because a person can come tomorrow and sign you for a deal. But if you're not ready mentally, you're going to get ran through. You know what I'm saying? The music industry is cutthroat. And you sometimes we pray for things. We want them so bad. God, just give me a million dollars. Look at the lady that did win millions of dollars. What did she do? Bought her man out like three or four times out of jail. But if she was prepared mentally for what she was praying for, things wouldn't have went that way. So sometimes we pray for things that we're not mentally ready for. Oh, God, just give me a business. Give me a restaurant, Lord. Don't even know the cost of napkins, ketchup, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? If you really want something, you can't just ask for it. Earn it. Research it. Know what it's about. Prepare for it. You know what I'm saying? Get ready for that blessing because so many times we're unprepared and the blessing can be like more of a hindrance because we don't know what to do with it. We don't know how to channel it. We don't we don't have no guidance. We just know it fell in our lap, but we don't know what to do with it. And that's the same that goes for relationships. Don't pray for a good man that when a good man comes, you're not even a good woman. You know, oh, I just want a good man, but are you a good woman? That's what I would like to know. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm guilty of that. I used to be like, oh, I just want a good man. Can a good man come around? It's like, oh, he, he, he a nerd. You know what I'm saying? Or I don't like this about him. I don't like that about him. It's because you're prepared. And when a real man come in your life, he's not coming to play games. And if you're a woman that's used to men playing games with you, you're not going to be able to handle a real man. You know, it's a process and it's definitely a mental thing. So ladies, I just suggest that whatever you're seeking, whether it's relationships, whether it's finances, just be prepared for it because when it comes, you need to be ready to make the best of it. And being prepared is like the top thing to do when you're waiting for a blessing. And I can't, I, I can't believe I almost talked an hour, but that just goes to show that I'm ready for this. <laughs> it just goes to show I can live this life. Like, really, even though I really didn't have anything written down, but I know my next shows, my future shows, I will have like a, a structure. But I wanted to tell about myself. I wanted to talk about the different things that I've been through and the different things I've overcome because I want you guys to get an understanding of me as a person. You know, just it's real. And it just feels good to be able to sit here and um, express myself and hopefully help somebody else. Hello, Ronald White. How have you liked, how do you like the show so far? <laughs> do you like, can you dig it or not? Nah? Will you be back next Monday or not? Nah? I need to know. You know what I'm saying? I need a man perspective, please, Ronald White. But this is definitely not a dating scene. Yeah, I can, you know, I got jokes too, but it's almost over. I got about 10 more minutes, but I still could talk for another hour, but I'm not because, um, it's just, it feels good to just tune in. Good. I'm glad you tuned in. Um, this show is definitely just about, uh, relationships, life and love. It's about encouraging each other. Hello, Elaine. It's about encouraging women to stay strong, to not deal with any disrespect. It's about women power and it's about women in business, about being an entrepreneur, being a strong mother, being the head of our family in a sense, because even though the man is the head of the household, thank you. Even though the man is the head of the household, the woman is still like in charge because it's like we're rearing the kids, we're making appointments, we're picking up dry cleaning, we're cooking, we're making sure everything is just like, you know, we're like the supervisors 
that the husband might be the CEO of the house and the wife is like the supervisor of the house. And um, we deal with a lot. So I just always want to keep women encouraged because we are more emotional than men. And sometimes we base um, decisions on our emotions when we shouldn't. We just get so upset. I can remember a countless times <laughs> getting upset and just taking all my husband's stuff and just throwing it outside and just not caring, throwing it in the street, just upset and just mad. And now I can laugh about it because I would never react that way, the woman I am today. But at the time, I just was going by emotions, hurt and pain. I just, I didn't know what to do. And this is actually a couple of incidents, incidents like that. <laughs> Where I just tore shit up because I was hurt. and um, But it was a learning lesson because once you mature, you understand that it don't take all that. You know, all it takes is communication. I don't like the way you treat me. You hurt my feelings. And if I feel that strong about it, I'm leaving. I'm walking away or I need time away. So sometimes we get caught up in argue matches. Well, you, well, you need to have God in your life and he will see that God... You doing good things. And yes, and I said that earlier and I totally agree with that. And that's the key to life. And that's like, you know, essential. It's essential to have God in your life. Yes, I totally agree. You know, so, and that's what another thing that changed me is having God in my life because I used to cuss men out like, bitch ass nigga this, this, that, this, that. I had a foul mouth. And now I couldn't even imagine talking that way because for one, it's disrespectful. And for two, if you love something, you know, nurture it. Don't break it down. And some women, we call our men all out their name, call them bitches and everything. And it's wrong. And all it does is break down the relationship. You know, even though a person might forgive you, that's going to always be in their mind and back of their mind. And it's just, it's just not a good feeling to be disrespected by somebody that you love or supposed to love you. So I took a lot of words out of my vocabulary when I'm dealing with my men, my men. <laughs> I'm saying my men, hey, look, <laughs> tell the truth, say the devil, my men. So I just, um, you know, it's all about respect too. And you get what you give. So, ladies, sometimes our men do things or they may say things where you do want to disrespect them or you might even want to hit them. But don't. You know what I'm saying? If you really want your relationship to work out, don't be abusive mentally or verbally. And if you definitely can't be, when we get, yes. And if you definitely can't um, deal with them, leave them. I, I don't have to lie. <laughs> I've been in a lot of relationships during my course of my life, and I have no regrets because they just prepared me and just showed me what I really wanted. And, you know, I just never was willing to settle. I've had some crazy relationships. I've had some good relationships. I learned a lot, and I've had a lot of fun. But at this point in my life right now, I am in a relationship, and I am content in my relationship. And it's also teaching me a lot. Like, it just feels good. Right. It just feels good to be um, content. You know what I'm saying? I don't... <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I want to be liked because I want to be um, somebody that my Facebook family, my Monday Nation, likes. And not only that, I'm going to have some t-shirts coming out. And I will be mailing some free t-shirts to my viewers. And we're just going to start a, a gang, you know, a nation, a nation of strong women who are independent and who are about making things happen for themselves and their family. So my time is up, but I had a great first video live with Miss Monday at Axe Monday. And if you really want some more information about me, you can always, always Google me. Or you can like my page at X Monday. And this is just the first of many. It gets greater later. You know, it's just so much more in store. But I just wanted to give everybody a little background about me. And just to let women know that we are powerful. And especially with God and through prayer and through communication and networking, there's nothing that we can't accomplish we are not an island. We um, need each other to survive. You have a radio show. Well, won't you inbox me a link or something? Let me check it out. And I'll take it from there. 
You are welcome, Miss Mahogany. So, I just want to say stay encouraged. It's 2017. Thank you, Elaine. Stay encouraged. It's 2017. And I just feel like we could just do something so impossible. Everybody just meet back. This is what you do. Since we're not going to see each other for a week, let me give you a little homework. Uh, everybody go and try to improve something in their life. Whether it's your relationship with God, whether it's your relationship with your family, whether it's your finances, whether it's starting a business, reading a book you never read, do something, working out, dieting, do something that you've been putting off and you're just so ready to do. Just do something and then come back here next Monday and post about it. Tell me about it and then we can go from there. Like me personally, the one thing I will be doing this week is getting up to work out. I haven't worked out in, I don't know, six months. So... To Wednesday, I will be here live 7 a.m. I, I don't get up till 7, but so I'm gonna be getting up at 6. So that's gonna be a challenge for me. So do something that is challenging and just start somewhere small and let's see where it goes from there. Have a wonderful day. I appreciate the people that did take time. Thank you for everybody that shared this video. May God be with you. I gotta go.